Good morning, Hassel Church family. It is uh, so good to be together with you again today. I, I often like to tell you how much I love you, and I pray for you guys. Uh, there's different concerns that you have during this pandemic and everything, and I just want to let you know I pray for you, uh, and I love you, and I'm, I'm grateful for this time that I get to spend with you week after week. You allow me to do something that I love to do, which is to open the Word of God and to listen to God with you, share what He's laid on my heart. And so I, this is a special time for me. I hope it is for you. And I just, again, want to say how much I appreciate you and I love you. And so if you have your Bibles this morning, go ahead and open them to Philippians chapter 4. We're going to be there in just a couple of moments. Uh, there's another kind of epidemic that is going through America right now, and it's an epidemic around the issue of stress and anxiety. And uh, anxiety and stress is such a uh, big part of the American life that the Washington Post labeled this generation the anxious generation. And it wasn't just the, the Washington Post. The New York Times came out and said that anxiety labels anxiety as Americanitis, that we have our own disease in America called anxiety. And last week we launched into a three-week series that we have entitled Anxious for Everything. And uh, we want to look at God's Word and try to figure out what He has for us in this regard. And so I want to review where we were last week. If you were not with us, by the way, I want to encourage you to go back online and check out last week's message because uh, I, it's important. There's some very important information I want you to learn about as we talk about anxiety, a very pressing issue in today's world. So for those of you that were with us, you will remember what we talked about. Uh, last week, we asked a couple of questions. And the first question that we asked was, what does it mean to be anxious? And we clarified at that time that we were not talking about a medical or a mental diagnosis. That, that, that anxiety that we were talking about was not something that a doctor diagnosed us with, but rather we were talking about a flesh response to the stresses of life that could be dealt with through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so uh, we, we delineated those things. Matter of fact, we used as a definition, I'm going to put it on the screen for you at this time, that being anxious is a fearful concern experienced when life's demands seem greater than my ability to meet them. Fearful concern experienced when life's demands seem greater than my ability to meet them. And so anytime life starts coming at us and, and all the demands of life start getting bigger than my ability to meet, uh, we would have this feeling of anxiety. Now, we, we were not saying last week that all anxiety and all the concerns of this world are bad. As a matter of fact, we delineated between two different things. We talked about genuine concern. And genuine concern was a burden that we had that forced us to depend more upon God. That, that forced us to ask the question, God, what are you going to do about this problem? And, and this is a genuine concern. Uh, there was another kind of thing that we talked about, which was a fearful concern or fearful anxiety uh, concern that would actually uh, force us to depend upon ourselves, to rely upon how, asking ourselves the question, how am I going to fix this? What do I do to get out of this problem that is facing me right now? And so the, the, the fearful concern became something that produced anxiety and worry and stress where the genuine concern forced us to depend upon the Lord. So we, we talked about that last week, that in as, asking the question, what does it mean to be anxious? Then we asked the second question, and it was this, why should I not be anxious? And we gave ourselves five reasons why anxiety was not very smart for us. And the first one was this, being anxious is really not pleasing to God. It is not pleasing to God at all. The second thing we said was that being anxious endangers our health physically and spiritually. And I gave you a long, long list of damaging effects that stresses and anxieties have on us as human beings, spiritually, physically, and emotionally. The third reason why we should not be anxious was being anxious is inconsistent with the character of God. That, that if God is really who he says he is, then why am I freaking out? Why am I stressing out? 
And we talked about that. The fourth reason why we should not be anxious is that it, the being anxious misrepresents the character of God to those people who are around us. So we say we trust in God. And if we're stressing out and we're being anxious about everything like that, it's really misrepresenting to everybody who's watching us the trustworthiness of God. And we talked about that at great length last week. The fifth reason why we should not be anxious is that being anxious doesn't change anything for the good. It changes a lot for the bad, but it doesn't change anything for the good. And again, if you didn't see that message or listen into that message last week, hey, encourage you to go back online and check it out. So let's ask the next question that we're going to answer this morning. We're going to spend the whole morning answering this question. How do I keep from being anxious in my life? How do I keep from being anxious in my life? Now, if we're going to be honest with each other, uh, one of the things that we need to admit is that all of us at some point experience moments of anxiety and stress in our lives. Uh, all of us have different propensities for sin. And some of us may struggle with this particular sin more than others that we might be given to to give in to, to anxiety and fear more than others, but we all struggle with this. Uh, again, if you, I said it last week, but if you're a follower of Jesus, it does not mean that you're going to be immune from having difficult times, difficult situations. And you cannot believe the lie that the enemy wants to tell you that, oh, if you're a Christian, you're not going to have hard things in your life. Uh, one of the reasons why we struggle is because of, as Christians, is that many times we think that as Christians, we should not experience stressful situations. But the Bible doesn't teach us that. The Bible actually teaches us that, that, that the opposite is true. That as Christians, we will experience stressful, difficult times in our lives. We talked about that as, as well last week. Now, one of the things we, we also need to recognize as we get into this is that in the Garden of Eden, when mankind sinned against God, all of humanity fell. And uh, we lost the ability to have a close relationship with God. And one of the damaging uh, effects of the fall is that you and I have to battle anxiety and fear. Now, this is not just a Christian problem. This is a human problem. And uh, human beings have been trying to figure out how to deal with anxiety and stress forever. Uh, one of the things that I did this last week is I went online and I began to look at different websites to try to figure out how human beings are trying to, to deal with this stress. And one of the, the websites I went to was, was a, a website that's called healthline.com. And you can go there yourself if you'd like, but it, it claims to be the fastest growing health information website on planet Earth. And if you go on there and check out who endorses this, this website, man, it's got a long list of very impressive doctors and scientists who say, man, if you want to know about health, this is the place to go. Now, if you go to the About Us page on this website, this is what you're going to find. It says this, we're a human just like you. That's awesome, right? We know that peace of mind can make all the difference in how you feel. So we will be here when you need us. Wow, doesn't that just make you feel warm and fuzzy right now? I mean, I just feel better having read that just now, that this website is going to be for, there for me if I ever need them. Now, I'm not going to talk down about this website this morning. They got lots of great information on this website. But one of the articles on this website is an article that is, that is entitled 16... Simple ways to relieve stress and anxiety. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to give you what number three is. Number three is this. Ready? Light a candle. <laughs> Light a candle. 
Oh, if we dig down deep into the resources of who we are, we can come up with some really good ways to handle stress, right? Now, let me just tell you something. If you got a problem today, here's the solution. Light a candle. I'm not making this stuff up. That's what it says. You drop down a little bit further. It, it says this. Number six is this. Chew gum. Chew gum. Listen, guys, you don't need to, 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 to take my word for it. You can Google it yourself. This article exists that chewing gum will reduce your stress. Some of you right now are chewing gum and you're feeling a lot less stressful than the rest of us who are not. This would be funny were it not so they were not being serious. Th this is how people are dealing with stress. Now, there's another article I, that didn't satisfy me, I got to tell you. So I started looking around again and I went to another website called, called BuzzFeed. Maybe you've heard of it. And on BuzzFeed, they had another article. They gave 16 ways to get rid of stress. I don't know what is up with the number 16, but they did. And the article is entitled 16 Little Ways to Keep Anxiety from Ruining Your Life. Now, what I'm about ready to show you is literally on their website. And I'm going to put it up here for you. This is not a joke. This is a serious article. Number 12, imagine yourself taking off your anxiety glasses and giving yourself a break. Now, now that is actually, you're seeing the cat take off its glasses and you're seeing that over and over again. He, I'm not making this stuff up. I don't even know what it means to take off your glasses. You take off the, imagine yourself taking off the anxiety like you're taking off a pair of glasses. I'm not really sure what that means, but that's their solution. Number 13 says, schedule time for your anxiety. And on this part of the page, there's this actual, a phone with a calendar open where the guy has blocked off 30 minutes so he can stress out during those 30 minutes and then get back to life as normal. I wish I was making this stuff up. If you're serious, want to Google it, you can find this stuff. Now, let me say today that you and I have a better source to turn to. We have another place to go. When anxiety starts to close in on us, when we're feeling anx anxious, Listen, you and I can go to the one who made us. When I say made, he knows every single detail about you. He knows what you're feeling. He knows where you're, where you're sensitive and feeling weak. He knows everything about you. Actually, he spoke your existence into being. And this one who made you also wrote us a letter. And in this letter, he tells us how to deal with stressful situations. And so before I light my candle, before I go buy some gum and start chewing that, before I start taking off my glasses of anxiety, whatever that looks like, I'm not even sure what, I, what that means. I want to look to the one who made me. I want to read from him what his counsel is to you and me as we go through stress. So you've got your Bibles. We're going to turn back to Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now, I want to leave that up on the screen for you for a moment because I want to unpack this as you look at it. Do not be anxious about anything. If, if you were here last week, you know that's as far as we got. 
That's all we dealt with. What it means to be anxious and why we should not be anxious. We learned that anxiety doesn't help us at all. He says this, do not be anxious about anything. But you see the next word there? You see it on the screen? But. It's a very little word, isn't it? It's called a participle of contrast. It means here's one option. When your life seems out of control and it's spiraling out of control. You've got this one option. You can be anxious. It's not going to help you at all. You can do it. It offers you no value. It's only going to hurt you. Or, but, here's another option. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God. You see the contrast? You got anxious, anxiety, or you got the peace of God. You got, see the contrast? And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. It's a peace you cannot explain. You, you shouldn't have it. Circumstances around you say you shouldn't have it, but you do. Will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I want you to look at me. Aren't you glad this morning that Paul, the Apostle Paul doesn't say, hey, go chew some gum. <laughs> Aren't you glad he doesn't say, go light some candles. You can, be, you can be anxious, Paul says, but there's a better way. There's an alternative. And this morning, I want to give you four musts. We're asking this, ourselves the question, how do I keep myself from being anxious? Here are four musts. The first must is this. I must know God. I must know God. Listen to the verse. And the peace of God. Now, I want you to notice something. He doesn't say the peace from God. He says the peace of God. Where does this peace come from? It, listen, it's God's peace. It, 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 it's His peace peace. Now, many of you are already followers of Jesus this morning. You have a relationship with God and you desire to hear from God this morning. You want to hear from his word to help you how you can avoid anxiety and, and stress and, and all the worry and all the things of your life. But there's others of you here this morning who don't have a relationship with God. Maybe you're seeking him. You got some questions. One of the greatest thrills of my life right now during this pandemic is since this pandemic, we have had over 40 people come to faith in Christ. And at the end of my messages every week, and I'm going to do it again today, give people an opportunity to come into faith, come into a relationship with, with God through faith in Jesus. But I want to give you a spiritual reality here. And I'm going to give you several this morning. You might want to write the, them down. Here's the spiritual reality. Number one, you cannot know the peace of God without knowing the God of peace. You cannot know the peace of God without knowing the God of peace. Listen, until you know the God of peace, the best option you've got is to light a candle and chew some gum. That's the best option you've got. But when you know, when you know the God of peace, you can call on him and his peace and every moment of every day in every situation of life, you can experience his peace. For those of you that have not come into a relationship with God, listen, the Bible says that all of us were made to be in a relationship with God. We were all made for that. But sin is the thing that forced us away. And God, holy God, could not be in a relationship with unholy, sinful people. But he loved us so much that he did something about this broken relationship. God himself entered Man, humanity came as a baby, born in Bethlehem. He came, became one of us. He never sinned, not one time. He perfectly fulfilled every law that the Old Testament said, every rule. He was sinless. 
and they nailed Jesus to a tree. He wasn't martyred, folks. He willingly laid down his life on the cross. And in his death, he paid for the sin of mankind. He, he died to remove the sin from your and my life so that though we were estranged from God, though we were enemies of God, that through faith in Jesus, death on the cross and resurrection three days later, we could be brought back into relationship with God. And until you know the God of peace, the one who made us to have peace again with him, you will never experience the peace from God. Oh, I'm going to tell you something. This God that loves you is a God of peace. The Bible says we were estranged, estranged from him. We were enemies. But God says, I'm not satisfied. I want to make it possible to bring you back into relationship. And, and the first step in having uh, peace in anxieties is to start with coming into a relationship with the God of peace. How do you do that? Put your faith in him, in Jesus. Believe that he's God, that he paid for your, your sin on the cross and come into relationship with him so that when you are facing the difficulties and the challenges, listen, you don't have to face those challenges alone. You, you don't. You draw upon the peace of God. You don't know Jesus. Step one is you got to come into know you got to come to know him by placing your faith in him. Paul, the Apostle Paul, who wrote this book of Philippians and talks about this anxiety issue and peace from God, a few several verses later, in verses eleven through thirteen, this is what he says. He says this. Paul says, "Not that I am speaking of being in need." For I have learned in whatever situation to be content. <laughs> now, isn't that a great verse? How about that? How many of you are shouting amen over that one, huh? I have learned to be content whatever cir circumstance I'm in. Look what he goes on to say. I know how to be brought low. I know what it's like to be low. I know how to abound. In any, and listen, every circumstance, I have learned, what? He's about ready to let us in on something. I have learned the, what? Secret of facing plenty and hunger, of abundance and need. Man, what's the secret? You say, what's the secret? Hey, look at it, it's the next verse. Look at it, look at it. I can do all things. Through him who strengthens me. It's not about the situation and circumstance we face or that we're in that makes the difference. It's that Christ is in us. And Paul understood this. Henry Blackaby says this, When Christ lives in you, he brings every divine resource with him. Every time you face a need, you meet it with the presence of the crucified, risen, and triumphant Lord of the universe inhabiting you. Wow! Do you understand that? Paul says, listen, man, when you are facing a problem, you're not facing alone. You, you're facing it with Christ in you. Here's the first must. I must know God. I must know God. And none of the rest of the must that I'm going to walk through this morning are applicable to you if you do not know God. But if you know Jesus today and you're trying to figure out this thing on your own, let me tell you, that's not where it stops, man. We don't figure out problems and stresses on our own. We get to go to the God of peace and get His peace for, from from him, listen. If you know, if you're trying to figure out life and the stresses of life alone, you're alone. You're and you're not a Christian. You're never going to find peace from your anxiety. You don't know Christ. Listen, God has sovereignly allowed you to be tuning in today, watching me this morning, listening to me to hear the truth, 
so that you can have a relationship with Him. Step one, number one must is you must know God. Number two, I must live my life in constant fellowship with God. I must live my life in constant fellowship with God. And this is where a lot of us as Christians get off track. A lot of us will say, well, you know, Rich, I know God. Why don't I experience peace? I'm a Christian. Well, listen, to experience the peace of God is more than just knowing God. You and I must live in constant fellowship with God. Look, look down at the verse. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, in everything, by prayer. This word is the most basic Bible word for just simply talking with God. Just talking with God. So, ready to watch this? This is what we do. We put God into a box. And uh, we bring Him out of our box on Sunday morning. Uh, like right now. We, uh, we pull Him out and this is our... We put God in this box and we kind of say, okay, on Sunday morning, hour, hour and a half, whatever it is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have my God box. I'm going to experience God. Uh, if I'm involved in a growth group, and by the way, we encourage all of us to be growing in community. We need other people, other Christians around us that can help us, pray with us, and do life with us. And we pull God out of the box for our growth groups. And you know, it's kind of a good time for an hour, hour and a half again. We meet, we have a great time, and we talk God talk, and then we put him back in the box. And, and maybe you have a quiet time. You have your God time in the morning. And maybe for 10 or 15, 20 minutes a day, you, you pull God out of the box and you think about God. And so we put God back. And once we're done with those, we, we put him over here and we go live the rest of our lives. Now, if you just do those three things, worship, pull them out for worship, pull them out for growth group, pull them out for your quiet time you're going to basically be in a relationship with God for about 3% of your life. 97% of your life is you going to work, you're doing chores around the house, you're being with your friends, doing sports, family stuff, doing all the things that you like to do. So you got 3% is your God, your experience, you're, you're, in a, you're relating to God, you're, you're listening to Him, and 97% is you. And what Paul is saying in all of this, he says, this is not how it's supposed to be. We, we don't leave God over there. God, Paul says, listen, in every situation of life, bring your concerns to God in prayer. Talk to God. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything. Everything. You know what this word everything means in the Greek? Yeah, you got it right. It means everything. The root of the word actually means the whole, but it also means every part in the whole. And what Paul is saying, hey, you, you, can, be, uh, you can be anxious. You can go live your 97% of your life over here and, and try to deal with it yourself. And when you do, you, when stressful situations come up, you lean on yourself. You say, how am I going to fix it? What am I going to do? Or, there's another option. In everything, in everything, I bring my problems, I bring my concerns to God. See, what we do when we, we leave God in a box, what we do is, we got our 3%, we feel like we're good, but 97, when things go stressful, we get on social media. When things get stressful, we start texting people. We start complaining and, and, and spinning out. Paul says, you can do that. But it's not the best option. It's not God's option for you. Listen, in everything, when you start getting into those difficult situations, stop Run to your Father who loves you. Run to Him and bring every concern of your life to Him in prayer. Everything. Can I just share with you something? In 
in my own personal life, my life rises and falls based upon my time with God. Based upon whether or not I am leaning on Him moment by moment of every day. And, and when I am in, in enjoying the presence of God and when I am moment by moment bringing my concerns, my needs before the Father in prayer, you know what? All of hell can be unleashed against me and I will experience peace. But when I push him over to the side to that 3% or whatever is your percentage and, and I'm not spending time every moment with God, moment by moment, let me tell you something. I can go to some very dark places spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, mentally, just like you can. And so that's where Paul, Paul's given us this great counsel. He says, listen, in everything, everything, bring it to God. There's a great passage of scripture in Psalm, Psalm 73, verse 28. It says for this, as for me, the nearness of God is my good. Oh, God is near. I need to be in constant fellowship with him. It's for my good. So the Bible says that I must know God if I'm going to experience his peace. And secondly, I must live my life in constant fellowship with him. What's our third one? Here's the third must. I must be honest with God about the cares and concerns of my life. It's time to be honest. I must be honest with God about the cares and concerns of life. Look at the verse there. It says this, do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Now, that word supplications means this, to make your needs known. A, a, a request is coming from uh, a need that I have for God. And so, so what Paul's saying is, listen, what I need to do is bring my request, bring my needs before the Father. This word request means petition. It's a very specific thing that you and I, I'm, I'm specifically asking for. And Paul says, let your request be made known to God. And it's interesting in the Greek, it probably doesn't mean a lot to you, but it means something to me. It's a present passive verb, which means you don't have to fix it. You just bring it to the Father and sit back and you're passive now. He does the work. He does the heavy lifting. Oh, Paul says, listen, listen, fellow child of God, let me tell you something. Instead of asking yourself how you're going to fix it, run to your Father who loves you who indwells you and welcome his presence in that specific moment. Instead of stressing, look to him, invite him in to work in that stressful, difficult situation. And be honest with him. Share what you're really feeling. Oh man, I can't do it. Here, here's a spiritual reality for you. Trusting God at all times doesn't mean you can't be honest with God about all things. You see that? Trusting God, uh, trusting God at all times doesn't mean you can't be honest with God about all things. Paul is saying, hey, hey guys, do yourselves a favor. Instead of picking up the phone and stressing out and calling everybody and texting everybody and emailing everybody, hey, stop, stop. And Pour out your concern before God. Tell him what you're really, really feeling. You say, oh, pastor, pastor, I, I couldn't tell God what I'm really feeling. Let me tell you a little secret. He already knows. Yeah, but I'm not feeling good things. I'm not, it's okay. 
pour it out. Lord, I know I shouldn't feel this way, but I feel like you've just forgotten me. I, I pray and pray, and it seems like you're answering everybody else's prayer, but you're not answering my prayer. I feel like I'm the most loved child you got. It's just honest, right? Or, or God, I'm, this person has made life so miserable for me and I'm getting really bitter. And I know you tell me in your word I shouldn't be, but that's what I'm feeling. And as a Christian, I want to encourage you, you have the privilege to go before your father and be honest. He wants you to be honest with him in all things. Psalm 62 verse 8 says this, Trust him, trust God at all times, O oh people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Pour out your heart before him. He's, it's a safe place for you to do so. You know that word, pour out? You know what it means? It means turn it upside down. You just dump it out. All the concerns that you have in that moment of life. Run to your father, turn to him, run to him. Take all the burdens you're carrying in that big barrel and just dump them, up, turn them upside down at his feet. It's okay for you to share your frustration and your hurt and all your feelings, anger, here they are, Lord. Here they are. Charles Spurgeon says this, Turn the vessel of your soul upside down in his secret presence. Let your inmost thoughts, desires, sorrows, and sins be poured out like water. Hide nothing from him for you can hide nothing. Just pour out your heart. What, what, an, what an encouragement, huh? You don't have to carry it alone. And you've got a father who understands you and who's asking you to pour out your concerns to him. The fourth month must is this. I must be intentional about thanking God, especially in stressful situations, that tempt me to be anxious. I must be intentional about thanking God when, especially in stressful situations that tempt me to be anxious. Look what the verse says. Do not be anxious about anything. Well, there's one option. But here's another option. In everything, every detail, by prayer, that's by talking to God, and supplication, letting Him know your needs, with what? There it is. You see it? Thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. <sighs> Pastor, what am I to be thankful for? What do I have to be thankful for? My spouse just died. Or my spouse is treating me like this. My kids are acting like this. I, I can't live my life in the middle of a pandemic because of all these restrictions. What in the world do I have to be thankful for? Here's what you have to be thankful for. For what God is going to do. How God is going to show His faithfulness to you. Do you remember when the disciples were with Jesus in the boat in the middle of the lake? And, and remember the big storm that took place? And all the disciples are freaking out. They have lost their minds. They're trying, they're bailing water as fast as they can. They're, they're, they're just, they're stressed out and they're frustrated with Jesus because what's Jesus doing? He's sleeping. How could he be sleeping? Hey, let me tell you why. Before, something happened right before they got in the boat. Do you remember? Before they got in the boat, Jesus said to them, 
Hey guys, let's get in the boat and go to the other side. He didn't say, hey, let's get in the boat and go in the middle and drown. He didn't say that. He said, let's get in the boat and go to the other side. Who had made that statement? God had. All that the disciples had to do when they're stressing and bailing and freaking out in the middle of that lake, all they had to do is to remember what God had said. L listen, church, what has God said to you? What has he said to me? He has, uh, is that he will be faithful. He is not going to abandon you in any way or shape or form. God says, I, who began a good work in you, will fulfill it. I'm not going to abandon you. I, I'm not going to leave you. In every situation, every challenging, frustrating situation and circumstance that you and I have, listen, listen, what they are. These are great, great opportunities for God to show you His faithfulness. Let that sink in. Every situation that is stressful is an opportunity for God to show you just how faithful He is. And to show all the people around you who are watching you go through this how faithful your God is in the midst of the storm that you're facing. See, we're to be thankful. And in the midst of the storm, we cry out to God, I am so thankful that though I don't understand the storm, I'm so thankful that you're going to show me your faithfulness in the midst of this storm. It's a faithfulness and a lesson that I can't learn on a sunny day when the lake is flat. But I can learn it today. I can learn it in the, in the storm that I'm facing. Let me give you another spiritual reality. Thanksgiving is the greatest weapon you have against anxiety and stress in your life. Did you know that? I'm going to read that again. Thanksgiving is the greatest weapon you have against anxiety and stress in your life. When you're grateful and you're thankful for God in the midst, all that anxiety and all that frustration and anger and built up injustice against you starts to disappear. Can I, can I tell you, let you in on a little secret here? One of the things I know is that you and I have an enemy. His name is Satan. And I'm going to tell you something. One of the things that he, it, it, when the enemy knows that one little frustration is going to shipwreck you, Oh my goodness, does he get excited. Let me tell you what happens. When he can throw one little frustration in your past, path and it causes you to start to depend upon you and stress out, he loves to do that. And you know what he's going to do after that? He's going to give you more frustrating things. He's going to give you more. You know why? Because it makes you and me look away from God and we start depending on ourselves more and more. And it makes everybody around you, by the way, say, man, you, you claim to be a Christian and you're stressing out just like the rest of us. That God of yours is not very trustworthy. But when the enemy figures out that every time that he throws a difficulty in your path, that that causes you to press into Jesus to press into God and say, God, I'm going to be thankful in this thing. I, I'm going to trust you in the midst of this storm. I, I'm going to give you praise. I'm going to bring my request before you and let you work as you want to work. You know what? You're not any fun to throw little frustrating things in your path anymore because the enemy says, I don't want you to do that. But as long as it causes you to stress, oh man, he's just going to have a lineup of difficulty after difficulty after difficulty. You say, but Rich, I don't 
feel real thankful. I don't feel it. Let me tell you something about feelings. Feelings always follow faith. Clyde Cranford says this, feelings follow faith. That's a powerful statement. Feelings follow faith. Thus, thankfulness is the result of thanksgiving. What? No, don't get that wrong. Thank, thanksgiving is not the result of thankfulness. He says this, thankfulness is the result of thanksgiving. And worry and genuine thankfulness cannot abide in the same heart. When you and I start to cultivate, choose a heart of thanksgiving, even in the difficulty, God gives us a thankful heart. God says, listen, your flesh, your flesh is going to want you to do this, be anxious, stress out, be frustrated. Your hearts can lead you. Or I got another option. Or I've got a better option for you in everything. In everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, you let your request be known to God. And I want you to see what happens. Don't miss this. I want you to see what's going to happen. Verse 7 says this, And the peace of God. See that? And the peace of God. Anybody want some peace this morning? And the peace of God, which, what? Surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Anybody want the peace of God? You're never going to find it by running to yourself. You'll never find it there. You're never going to find it chewing gum and lighting candles. You're not going to find it there. But the peace of God can be given to you and I when we run to the Father, when we run to Him, we pour out our heart. We, we turn over that barrel of, of concerns and just dump it upside down. And we express an attitude of gratitude that God you haven't abandoned me. You're going to show me your faithfulness in this difficult situation right here and now. And God, I can trust you. My flesh leads me over here. All the anxiety, all the stress. But God says, no, there's a better option. But in everything through prayer, and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God and the peace of God is available for you. Now, I love this about this because he says, and the peace of God, which surpasses understanding, that's in the here and now. There's one part that is present. Right now, you don't have to wait for 10 years for it to be over. Matter of fact, a little side note here. I'm gonna tell you something. Whatever you're going through, God's gonna lead you through it. God is faithful even when you choose not to be. And five years from now, you'll look back on this experience and you're going to say, oh, God was really good. He took me through that fiery, difficult time of 2020, right? Well, if you're going to say that five years from now, why are you not saying that now? Lori and I went through some very hard things together several years back and we, we, we actually contemplated this thought. You know, 10 years from now, we're going to say God took us through it. Let's say it now because it's true now. And the peace of God, which surpasses understanding now. It doesn't even make sense. Why does it not make sense? Because it's not my peace. It's God's peace. And he gives it to me now. Oh, child of God, when we run to him and dump all these concerns, we experience the peace of God now. And it doesn't make sense. It won't make sense to any of your neighbors. It won't make sense to your family members. But it will make sense to you. Because you know it didn't come from you. It comes from God. And you get to experience that right now. Not when it's over. Now. But then he goes on to say this. Not only, well, it, it surpasses understanding now, but it's going to guard your hearts and mind. Listen, church. 
When you choose to live like this, when you choose to be bringing your concerns to God, not posting them on social media, bringing them to God, let me tell you, you are positioning yourself for a life of victory. Your position for the future, for years to come, your heart and mind is going to be guarded against future difficulties that are coming at you. Because one of the things about life is that this is very, very true. All of life has challenges and difficulty. And God says, hey, get in the practice of this. It will solve, you're going to have a peace that surpasses understanding in the present, but you're also going to have your heart guarded against future frustrations and challenges. Can you listen? We know the, the God of peace. And we go to Him. Now, this morning, if you don't know the God of peace, oh, my friend, you, you, you can't ever experience peace in the storm until you know the God of peace. And I want to invite you this morning, if you have never trusted Christ, to come to Him. Oh, He loves you. He loves you so much. Jesus died for you to show you how much He loved you so He could bring you back into relationship with Himself. Step one. Come to know the God of peace. Trust Him as Lord and Savior. And for those of you that already know Him as Lord and Savior, oh, bring, let this, these verses, memorize these verses where you can come and be anxious for nothing but, oh, there's a better option. There's a much better option. And choose it. In every situation, listen, God doesn't stay in a box. God is in my life. In every situation of life, I invite Him and I bring these problems to Him. Oh, church, what a tremendous a promise this is of God that He will give us His peace. Will you, will you join me in prayer? Lord Jesus, we just thank You for Your Word this morning. It is so encouraging that we don't need to go light candles and we don't need to go buy some, some gum. Lord, we have a God who created us, who knows every detail. He knows the abuses that we've experienced in the past. We know who knows the betrayals that we may be experiencing right now. He, he understands the loneliness. He understands the frustration, everything about us. And he tells us how to deal with this thing called anxiety, this fearful, anxious concerns. And Lord, I, Lord, I just... I want to pray that we would be a church that would experience the peace of God from the God of peace in every situation of life. And that God, instead of being anxious for everything, we would be experience your peace in everything. And Lord God, I thank you for this church family who, who are week after week meeting us here online and are, are, desiring to, are desiring to hear from you. God, they have stresses. They have concerns. God, may they, each one force them into you. May they remember your promises to be faithful. May, may they remember that you have asked them to bring their concerns to you and that you are faithful. You who began a good work will complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. And Lord, I thank you that you are a good father that can handle it when we dump all these concerns on you and that you give us peace. May we experience that peace as we obey your word. And I just want to talk to you this morning who don't have a relationship with God. Oh, we've talked about it at the beginning. We talked about it at the end. And I want to invite you to just pray with me in the quietness of your heart. Come to know the God of peace. He did all the work. He loves you. He died on the cross to pay for your sin. He rose again and he says, hey, all you need to do, I've done all the, all the heavy lifting. I've done all the work. Just place your faith in me. Let, let me be Lord of your life. I know how your life works. I created you. I know every detail about you. And I know how it works best. 
And as you follow me, oh, I've got a life of blessing and abundant living for you. So I'm going to invite you just to pray with me. Lord Jesus, just if you've never prayed this before, Lord, Lord Jesus, I trust you today as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for forgiving me of my sin when you died on the cross for me. You are God. And I pray that I would live my life following you. Your resurrection power is evidence that you can change my life. Help me to live for you. And Lord Jesus, what a great series this has been for us. Just two weeks in, we are already feeling just encouragement from your word. We want to be found faithful, not putting you in a box this week, and not doing our best with, by chewing gum or lighting candles, but by running to you and trusting you with our concerns. Lord Jesus, bless this, your church family. You know their needs. You know their frustration. God, may, you, may they see your faithfulness, see your work in their life, see your love for them, and be encouraged to live for you this week. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to thank you for watching Hessel Online. Make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can stay up to date on the latest content and also share it with a friend. And if you've been blessed by our ministry and want to support us financially, you can give through our app or, or click on the link in the description below. I want to thank you again for watching and God bless you.